Feather Falls, which means someone, somewhere, is talking about Andalim Easter. And that person is me. There are few designers with the capability of leaving a multi-generational impact, and almost no example is better than her. And we don't like federal agents public. Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to yet another beautiful video. Four, almost five years ago, when I was at the age of 17, I made a video covering the history of Anne de la Meester. That video did not do her justice. This is my redemption to her. We begin on the 29th of December, 1959, and Anne Verhelst is born. I grew up in Belgium, and I'm, I'm not pronouncing this correctly. After growing up primarily in Wergum, Belgium, <laughs> after growing up primarily in Wergum, <laughs> Wareham, after primarily growing up in Wareham, Belgium, she ends up about an hour away in Antwerp. This is where, from 1978 to 1981, she studied at the Antwerp Academy of Fine Arts, graduating, as we all have come to know, amongst the group called the Antwerp Six, which included herself, Dries van Noten, Marianne Yee, Dirk Bickenbergs, Walter van Berendonck, and Dries van Sam. Her art at the time was rapidly evolving, from not originally studying fashion design to, as mentioned, graduating from arguably one of the best fashion schools of all time. Her most important influence, though, was her muses. And three seem to come up quite often. Jim Dime, Jackson Pollock, and Patti Smith. Jim Dine and Jackson Pollock, both being infamous painters whose visual deconstruction of objects appear as an influence in her graphic work. Arguably the most important, though, was Patti Smith. If you were to sum up a lot of Anne de Meester's early work, the name Patti Smith truly does encapsulate all of it. The rejection of the trajectory of women's fashion of the time mixed in with her very strong rhetoric of, and I will quote, who could imagine a poet wearing anything but black, is and was such a strong and revolutionary approach to fashion that it makes me, even right now, to stop wearing color. By 1985, with the switch in last name from Verhelst to De La Meester, her brand was launched. Within only six years, she found herself at Paris Fashion Week, and only four years after that, her men's label was launched. Within only six years, she found herself at the front of Paris Fashion Week, and only four to five years after that, in around 1995 to 96, her men's label was launched. Motifs. Very few artists within the realm of fashion understand the importance of motifs to the extent of Andalamista. These themes that continuously appear in her work transcend her clothing, even her interviews, and end up cementing them in her own life. This shows up in one of my favorite quotes from her, despite how short it is. <clears throat> a home should be like a bird's nest. And, and I, once again, very short quote, yet I feel that it shows how deep these motifs impact her and create an influence on her life. She notes multiple times when we come to birds that we see, of course, feathers throughout multiple different shows. We see birds on prints and feathers on prints. And she notes as well multiple times throughout different interviews that it not only represents humbleness to her, but poetry. 
which links back to my earlier quote. Obviously, they're highlighting how important poetry is to her as well. Next are necklaces, something that you wouldn't automatically assume is a motif, yet throughout all of her shows, without a doubt, there is a very, very heavy emphasis on accessorizing, especially when it comes to the neck with necklaces, and this bleeds back into the birds motif where we see feather necklaces from all different seasons, and after seeing a few in person, they really are beautiful. Finally, we have lacing. This is something that we see slowly at first accumulating to its triumph at what I would say is her greatest show, which I'll talk about shortly, and even today after her departure still resonates very heavy in the Andalum Easter brand. From simple shirts in the more recent seasons to the more extravagant designs, lacing or strings are there. Talking about arguably her best, nothing comes close to Fall Winter 2011, the magnum opus of blending all previously mentioned motifs. We have Fall Winter 2011. We see it all, lacing and string pushed to its utmost extent throughout every aspect of the outfits, from boots all the way to the clothing itself. Bird-like figures are then blended in with feather necklaces and jackets that truly push these motifs even further. Everything is there. Part of me surely believes she knew she would be leaving her brand about two years later, and this was her last great attempt at the best of the best, and it truly is her magnum opus. This show was the Andalum Easter show. Another notable thing when it comes to her best of the best is unique items, and none comes to my mind more than the back lace boots. Something that once started has shown itself in practically every single following season, and there is always an iteration, whether it's a change in the heel or the leather used, but there are always the back lace boots, and it is another staple to the Andalum Easter brand. I've had quite a few as well, and despite, and this will be my one critique of them, their tendency to snatch at the hem of the bottom of your pants, because of course, these lacing eyelets or hooks are on the back side of the boot, and they can rip your pant. The pair I have right now has been luckily not doing that, but my first pair destroyed a few of my pants. The birds are chirping, so they must know I'm out here talking about her. Either way, after Anne, on Wednesday, the 20th of November, 2013, 28 years in, Anne de Easter announced her retirement with the simple handwritten note, I feel it's time to separate our paths. To add a slight side tangent to this somber event, was this the right choice? I truly can't say. However, in my own humble opinion, I feel that more designers should take the route that Raph Simmons did, of leaving and shutting down his brand. Business, and of course, at a very high level like this, of a brand that is over 20 years old, bleed into each other very easily. However, I find it a disgrace to the art to leave a brand without its founder, as then it truly just becomes business. Either way, the brand continues on, and so does time, and Sebastian Muner takes the reels. Arguably the best creative director besides Anne de as I don't think any of the creative directors that follow understand Anne's aesthetic how he did. 
I also think one of the reasons for this undoubtedly is because of his tenureship under Mesa Margiela, who I would consider in the same sphere of influence as Anne, and thus there was definitely a connection and understanding of what the brand was meant to be. However, by July of 2020, the baton was handed off back to Anne de la Meester. <laughs> This comes as the brand was actually bought out by Claudio Antoli. So there was, first off, a massive shift of the brand moving from Belgium to Italy. And with this, Andalyn Easter came back. However, she did have a quote-unquote ghost creative director right under her, who was Nina Maria Nietzsche. And she, coincidentally, also had a tenureship under Mesa Margiela. So there's definitely a theme here of who can understand her work, her brand, and her motifs. These shows, however, were criticized quite a lot because of how minimal they were. But I felt as time went on, by 2021, they definitely had picked themselves up again and we're getting to that Andalan Easter standards. And then the unthinkable happened. Ludwig de Saint Serene was given the title of creative director, whose failures at the brand not only netted them a 10 million euro loss that year in revenue, but only lasted for less than nine months at the brand before leaving. I would like to say there I am slightly embellishing the 10 million euro as he came in December of 2022 and that was their reported revenue for the entire year. However, by July 2023, he was already gone. And on the brink of death, Stefano Gavici was then appointed the new creative director. And he still holds this title to this day. And under him at the moment, we can definitely notice that he, much more than the previous two designers, at least understand Anne again. However, really not enough time has passed at all to know the full impact of him at the brand and how long he'll even be at the brand. There's been a lot of turnover over the past four years at Anne, so I could imagine it's quite unstable. If I'm correct, it was reported with the move to Italy, 32 out of the 38 employees who had been there for decades were fired, and now it's only a team of 25, which, you know, could be good or bad, but you lost so many core members to this brand, and then you're bringing on person after person after person, the instability adds up. And that really is where we are to this day. I truly hope this is a more comprehensible, in-depth, and nuanced, hopefully, look at Andalyn Easter. I am definitely happier with the approach I took here. I hope you all enjoyed this. Thank you as always so much for supporting me, and have an amazing day.